Today we're going to do a pre-start inspection on a 19-foot scissor lift. ANZA requires at the beginning of each shift or each day that a visual inspection and function test be given for the following items listed on the pre-tag inspection card. The first thing we're going to do is verify the correct manuals are on board. The AEM manual, the current manual of responsibilities, and the correct operating manual specific to the aerial platform. The second thing we're going to do is a visual inspection and function test. As we walk around the machine, we're looking at the overall uh, dynamics of the machine. We're looking for decals, hydraulic leak, potential structural damage. We're just giving the machine a visual inspection as we walk around it. Then once we pick a particular starting point on the machine, particular this right rear wheel, we're going to go ahead and inspect this right rear wheel. We're looking for damage to the tread, loose fasteners, maybe oil coming out of the spindle, cracks in the rim. We're looking for maybe damage or material wrapped around the spindle itself. So here we have a good wheel. We're also going to do a visual inspection and function test of the rear of the machine. Here we have 110 to the platform, which energizes the 110 outlet in the floor of the machine. Here we have a master disconnect we're going to test right now. So here we have a machine that operates, a master disconnect for preventing unauthorized access turns the machine off. That particular device works. Now we're going to test our lift lowering device from the ground controls. It does not work without the enable pressed and it returns to the neutral position. The machine goes up and down. We've just done a function test. In addition, we want to look at the plug on the charger to make sure it's not missing a ground lug. Make sure the charger is bolted in place. On this particular machine, we have manual brake releases that we need to check to make sure that they're free and working properly and they engage the wheels ensuring that they're greased and lubed properly. Over here we have a serial number placard that has more specific information to the machine. We have another wheel over here. We're looking for debris wrapped around the spindle. Chunks missing out of the tire that could affect stability. Cracked rim, loose lug nuts, anything that could affect the machine's safety. Over here we have part of the pothole protection device that moves up and down. We're looking for debris in that area. We're looking for damage to the pothole protection bar. Here we have the lower hydraulic and electrical station. So we have an hour meter, circuit breakers, a audible alarm that we need to check in a little bit. Here we have the electrical assembly. We're looking for burnt cables, loose cables, relays that could be laying around. Over here we have the hydraulic manifold. We're looking for leaks, loose cables, things that don't belong in the area. Over here we have electric power unit. We're looking for melted cables, arc flash, brushes, uh, uh, residual oil that could potentially catch on fire. Over here we have the hydraulic tank. We're looking for the hydraulic fuel level. We're looking for the hoses to make sure there's nothing pinched or in, the, in an area that doesn't belong. Here we have another wheel assembly. Again, we're looking for tread, lug nuts that are loose, drive spindle lug that could be loose. We're looking for kingpin wear, hydraulic, uh, I'm sorry, grease in the grease fitting. Over here, we're looking at the steering linkage for being properly secured, the steering cylinder for leaking oil and damage, a hydraulic motor that could be leaking or loose. Over here, we have a freewheel involved. When we open the brakes in the rear of the machine earlier, this is how we freewheel the machine. It's a two-part operation. With the brakes released and the valve open, we can now push the machine. We need to test that to make sure that it works, make sure the knob is in place. Here we have another hydraulic motor with hydraulic hoses on it. We're looking for maybe a gap between the wheel and the drive plate to make sure that's not loose. Again, things wrapped around the drive motor. The condition of the tread. Loose lug nuts. Cracks in the rim. We come over here, we have another pothole protection bar that we need to look at. Open the door, we have batteries. We're looking for loose battery cables. Battery cables that have been hot, excessive corrosion. We're looking for the correct electrolyte in the battery. We must have the appropriate personal protective equipment on to do this test or check. Underneath the machine, we're looking for additional things that don't belong that somebody could have drove over while operating the machine. In this particular area back here, we have hydraulic hoses and electrical cables that don't need things gouging into them. Now we've just checked the base of our machine. Now let's go to the lifting structure. Now we're going to check our lifting structure. Elevating the machine from the lower control station sufficiently enough to check the structure. So here we start around, we have cross tubes with pins in them, cross tubes that are welded in place, pins, fasteners, limit switches, pins, assemblies. We're looking for anything that's rubber 
weldments on the scissor arm assembly. Never sticking your arm inside the platform. It's unsafe to do that at the moment. We're looking for cracked welds on the scissor arms. We're looking for potential overstress from overloading. Uh, we're looking for pins that may be out of alignment. Anything that looks structurally wrong with this machine, we're looking for. We're looking at the hydraulic cylinder for leaks. We'll look at the hydraulic manifold assembly when we get to that side of the machine. The electrical harness, make sure it's properly and secure and in its place and not loose. We walk around the front of the machine. We want to look at the rollers to make sure they're rolling properly on the base of the machine. Again, always looking at the welds, the cross tubes, and the fasteners on the machine. Here we have a hydraulic manifold assembly. We want to make sure that it's not leaking or has been damaged. As we continue walking around the machine, we're now facing the other side. We have more welds, pens, and fasteners that we're looking for. Looking at the bumpers, the welds, the structural assembly of the scissor arm, ensuring that everything is in good operating condition. Once we're happy with the machine, we also have, and we notice we have debris on the inside of the machine that we need to remove. I'm going to show you how to do that safely just momentarily while we check the emergency lowering. So in order for us to check the emergency lowering, now we want to manually lower our machine on the scissor arm assembly so that we can remove the debris. Placing the scissor arm prop assembly in the appropriate location and opening the manual descent of the valve in the front of the machine. There's a procedure on the machine for doing that. It's also in the operations manual. We open the valve and come down here and you'll notice we have a manual valve. We can now lower the machine onto the safety prop, relieving the stress off the cylinder, and now we can stick our hand inside and remove the debris. But we have to reset the valve in order to elevate the machine. So we just simply put the valve in, back to its operating condition. Elevate it off the prop assembly. Park the prop assembly. And lower the machine. Now we've checked our scissor assembly, or our lifting structure, our manually lowering valve, and ensured we know how to use the safety prop to remove the debris from the machine should we find that in our pre-start inspection. Next, we'll look at the guardrail assembly. Now we're going to check our guardrail assembly. Part of our guardrail assembly is our chain. We need to make sure our chain is in good condition, that the lugs that it's attached to are welded and securely in place. Checking our upper bar to make sure it's in place. Shaking our guardrails to make sure that they're operating properly and secure. We're checking for loose missing parts or cracked loose welds. Make sure the stop works correctly. Checking the midrail, the upper guardrail. Shaking the deck to make sure that it's in place. Same thing over here, midrail, upper guardrail. Guardrail assembly and structure. Our guardrail assembly is safe, it's now okay to enter the platform. Once entering the platform, we have some more decals to look at, our danger and warning decals, ensuring our operations manual is still intact, rated workload, and how many occupants can be in the platform. Over here, we have some decals on a control box and some devices that we need to check. Some of them are just verifying the machine emergency stop works, the key switch works properly, the enable works properly. Checking our right turn. Checking our forward and reverse travel for high speed. So we have high speed travel and the brakes come on. We have high speed travel in reverse and the brakes come on. Now we're going to check our elevated drive speed cutout, putting the machine in lift, ensuring that the machine lifts, ensuring that it lowers. Now we're going to lift to a height where the drive cuts out, which is approximately six feet on this machine. Toggle this machine to, to drive steer, travel forward, ensuring the machine goes in low speed. And the machine goes in the low speed. Now we have three more things to check on this machine and we'll be done with our inspection. Now we have to check the pothole protection, which is a safety device required to be inspected prior to each use. The pothole protection device needs to have something obstructing the pothole in order for us to check it. In this particular case, we're going to put an obstruction the size of a 2x4 underneath the pothole protection 
elevate the machine and ensure that it cuts out our drive function at a predetermined cutout. So we're going to put it in lift, elevate it to six feet, toggle the machine to drive, and verify that drive cuts out, and it does. We're going to lower the machine and test the other side. Now we're testing the other side. As the machine elevates, the pothole comes down, makes contact with the 2x4 at around 6 foot of height. I want to verify that drive is cut out, and it is. So we have two correctly working pothole devices. Now we're going to check one more safety device, and we'll be done with our pre-start inspection. Now we have to check the slope warning device. In order for us to check the slope warning device, we have to put the machine on a slope. We're going to do that with this piece of wood. Having the machine in drive, driving on to the piece of wood. Elevating the machine roughly six feet. Waiting for it to cut out, and it did. Now we lower the machine. And this machine is safe to operate.